today. Uh, thank you so much for making the time to join this uh, session with uh, our EasyShift partner. Um, we have Zach here with us today. He has been in the logistics industry since 2014, a bit of a seasoned veteran um, already in this particular industry. And um, he is a country head or country director for EasyShip. And EasyShip is a very valued partner of um, Shopmatic on the Singapore platform. And um, they enable logistics shipping uh, for our merchants here in Singapore to help them to um, be able to conduct the business globally. Um, it is now a very important time to be talking about international businesses, logistics and shipping, because that is um, the one that is currently being affected by the whole COVID situation and the restrictions that many of the businesses are facing. And in that context, we have um, the absolutely op opportune topic to be discussed today, which is the trends and um, that we need to watch out for in 2020 as far as shipping and logistics concern. So thank you so much, Jack, Zach, for making the time to um, join us today and share with us um, your valuable insights and inputs um, from your experience as well as from the leadership point of view and how you can help our business um, owners. Uh, thank you so much. So take it away, Zach. It's all yours. I am going to um, allow you to share now. Uh, let me know if you have any trouble with that. All right, can you guys hear me? Uh, uh, yes, I can hear you. All right, so um, maybe just let me give you guys a brief introduction about Easy Ship. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you guys for coming um, you know, to attend the webinar. So uh, Easy Ship is actually a price aggregator for shipping. So we do have various partners with um, most of the courier providers available, such as like FedEx, DHL, UPS, and so on. Um, so we uh, we are one of Shopmatic's partner as well. So we we do provide um, shipping options for for merchants itself to to you know to enable them to ship, right? So today we are just going to talk about logistics and shipping and what are the things to note for, since um, you know like Zach, I believe, yeah, uh, there is a request yeah there is a request from a few members to requesting you to speak loudly and perhaps a little slowly and clearly. Yeah, sure. All right. Thank so, you. So um, let me let me just go through this again. Um, so EasyShip is a price aggregator. So we, we have offices in you know, Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia, and the US. Um, and we're looking to launch in various countries such as um, you know, Vietnam and so on. So uh, what EasyShip does is that we are actually a price aggregator with various career, um, so such as like FedEx, DHL, UPS, and so on. So today I'm gonna talk about logistic and shipping and what we should note for during this period of time, especially during COVID. Right, so, so there is a few things we'll go through today on um, based on today's agenda. So we'll talk about the shipping trend in 2020, you know, and uh, what, what, what sort of impact does it has, and the logistics supply chain impact as well, and you know, what, what warehousing impact um, and our approach um, to, to, you know, to overcome this hurdle itself in terms of shipping. Okay, so the shipping trends in 2020, you know, so uh, as you guys know, with, with a lot of countries having lockdown, so I, I believe these figures would actually change significantly. But then one out of four e-commerce dollars is generated from cross-border cross sales. So this is a projection based on 2021. Right, so this is actually based before COVID. So this survey was done, this study was done before COVID itself. But then due to COVID, um, it, it is going to alter, you know, the consumer mindset. Whereas we can start getting things online, right? So a lot of brands will actually see a boost in income, um, especially when they open up internationally. So you know, like I understand that in um, in today's webinar, there there is people coming from India and Singapore, so. You know, for Singapore wise, we definitely have to ship internationally because Singapore is just too small. All right. Um, so 20% of online cross-border transactions would be more than $150. Um, so it is definitely going to be higher. Um, for one, this is actually based on the consumer mindset. Whereas, you know, if, if you are going to pay for shipping, 
why not get more items, you know, to, to actually make your shipping worthwhile? Because because I believe, like, you know, you wouldn't want to be buying something like for like $40 and then pay $20 for shipping. So a lot of them wants to get the most value for money out when they actually purchase on a cross-border e-commerce platform. Right? So cross-border growth is actually the future. Um, with everything being so integrated right now, the world is actually getting smaller. So there, there is a 20% growth year on year for cross-border, which is actually going to be faster than domestic itself. Right? So you're actually going to reach out to new people or new, new consumers, which you are unable to reach previously. So global e-commerce sales are expected to reach 4.9 trillion by 2021. So this is the international. Uh, this is some stats based on you know uh, consumers in Singapore, right? So seventy three percent of shoppers in Singapore have actually bought their product overseas last year, right? So the average spend it's actually ninety one US dollars, which is quite a lot, and and it is actually expected to reach eight point four billion by twenty twenty three. So given how how small Singapore is, you know, like we we tend to shop online. So, so basically, this this is exactly what you know your your potential prospect uh, buyers would be would be doing as well for your store itself, right? So, for India itself, India is actually one of the top ten e-commerce market um, given the sheer size of the country, um, and international e-tail shipping it's uh, close to eight million shipments, right? So, uh, it is expected to grow to 31% and reach 21 mil, uh, 26 million by 2020. So which is this year, um, but, I, but I believe that there is gonna be a huge spike again because of COVID. Right, so expanding internationally can be achieved easily without any physical presence, right? So in, in the past, you know, like to, to actually to expand internationally, you need to sort of get a lot of um, documents or, or set up an office, but right now with the world getting smaller with e-commerce growing, you can actually do it in the comfort of your own origin country without having to have extra overheads in terms of uh, having a having an office there and physically managing your stocks in that particular country or region itself. Right. So, um, how did COVID impact logistic and shipping? Right. So, this is just a quick landscape of COVID. Um, I, I believe the cases has changed quite a fair bit since this was last updated in 15 April. So as you can see, COVID is actually spreading around the world. So how, how does that actually impact logistics, right? So not all couriers have their own flights. Um, they do not have their own planes. So, so what happens is that as, there's, as there is a reduction in commercial flights, this is causing a, a backlog you know, in terms of shipment, because there is not enough commercial flights to get, to take the parcel from one location to the next location, right? So, so a lot of a lot of our con, uh, consumers are having issues uh, in terms of how how can they actually ship their item if if a country decided not not to have any postal solution available. So this is actually a very good example in terms when Hong Kong is actually badly affected because of it when Hong Kong Post decides to shut down. Right, so this is just a quick uh, courier operation update, right? So this is some of our partners and then we do provide updates to our clients on what, what is the capability that they are able to fulfill. Right, so most of the major players, they are able to fulfill as well. Uh, so they are all fully operational like FedEx, UPS, TNT and DHL. They have their own flights, which is why they're not that badly affected. Right, so whereas for postal solutions, um, you can see like DirectLink. So DirectLink is actually owned by the Swedish Post. Um, they have decided to suspend their service for all country. So I mean, if you are just a no, uh, if you are a business user who only use DirectLink, then you are going to face issue in terms of transiting and finding a new alternative to to ship your products itself. Right. So for, whereas for SingPost, you know everything is still pretty much operational, unless for certain countries itself. 
right? So the next, the next effect, it's actually the surcharge, right? So with a growing demand in e-commerce commodities, um, there is actually a surcharge uh, being charged by the couriers itself in terms of, you know, how, how can they manage with this growing demand? Because there is not enough commercial flights. Uh, everyone is trying to get their stuff on the planes. So which is why there is this surcharge. So this is, this is a good note for you guys to actually take note on, on how it would actually affect, you know, in terms of you planning to ship internationally at this moment of time. So the impact of COVID-19 on logistic and supply chain, right? So uh, Flipkart and Amazon have suspended their logistic service for sellers on this platform. Um, so supply chain of about 25 to 30,000 supermarkets have been affected as well due to the lockdown. Outbreak and subsequent lockdown resulted in uh, stock shipment increase by 9% and 21% of uh, deliveries were delayed, right? So, so this this is actually a very clear, clear understanding. Where, whereas, like in terms of lack of flights and 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 solutions to actually ship internationally, a lot of parcels would get stuck and delayed, and then there is going to be an additional, you know, lead increase in lead time. Right, so uh, I'm, I'm not sure if most of you guys were affected by this, but then China was the first country to be affected by COVID um, during their Chinese New Year period, which is actually the worst time possible since um, the Chinese factory is always known to close for a month, right? So whereas it hit them during the Chinese New Year period, so Chinese factories were actually offline for a longer period of time, um, therefore causing a lack in supply for a lot of, uh, you know, like your products, it, itself right so so this this actually caused a delay in sh shipping for international shipments and uh, domestic shipment within China due to due to the strict lockdown right so so there is a lot of delays uh, in terms of um, you know shipment due to due to the airline as well right so so transport that there, there is a fair limit of transportation and logistic company. For, for logistics and company itself, uh, due to the fact that, due to the fact that um, FedEx has an overwhelming demand, so they are not able to cope with, you know, shipments of freight more than 100 kg itself, right? So this this is a, a very rare restriction, whereas like in terms where, you know, we would always expect the courier to take, you know, all sorts of volume you know, the, the larger the better, but, but in terms of capabilities right now, a lot of couriers are not able to, to actually manage the high demand itself from for shipments out of China and to the rest of the world or from Singapore or anywhere in the world. Right. So, so this is some, some examples of uh, how COVID actually affects our warehouse. Um, so these are some of our partners, which is based in Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, and the US. Um, so there, there is actually generally not much changes in terms of fulfillment. Um, I think this is actually due to the nature of fulfillment being an essential business in most countries, right? So I think Stashworks being the only uh, fulfillment partner we have in Singapore, they are not affected by the, uh, the circuit breaker lockdown as they are considered as an essential business. Right, so generally you see for, for the states that there is not much changes as well. Right, so our approach to, to, you know, to overcome this COVID hurdle. So what EasyShip is, is that we, we, we would recommend providing real-time shipping rates. Um, we have more than 250 shipping solutions. So there is a lot of different um, alternatives available, assuming if, you know, for example, direct link was shut. So what we did was that we actually provided the Hong Kong clients with alternative solution by using Quantium, right? So uh, our consumers, uh, our merchants are able to continue selling to their users itself or their buyers. Um, and at the same time, we provide full cost visibility. So we do update the rates as accordingly to, to you know, what the couriers are charging, 
right? So this is to ensure that you know you do not undercharge your clients in terms of shipping during um, the period of COVID, right? And at the same time, we do provide uh, taxes and duty as well. And then there is also shipping discounts uh, provided to, to our merchants as well. Right. So this is an example of a dynamic rate checkout. Um, the key to a dynamic rate checkout is actually to provide your consumers with the best experience possible. Um, so we do update like delivery lead times and, and the couriers itself. So what happens is that we would actually show up to three, three options, um, cheapest, fastest, and most valid for money. So we would actually include like taxes. What, what are the potential taxes and duty involved for international purchase? So this would actually help in terms of, um, you know, a reduction of having a, a rejected parcel. Because like for, for some clients, for some buyers, they do not know that they have to pay any sort of tax when they actually purchase from an e-commerce store. So, so this taxes and duty, it is a very good indicator, you know, like to, to prompt your buyers that, hey, there, there is going to be a potential taxes and duty involved, you know, um, when, when you purchase this product. Right. So, so what we have is besides providing our own courier options, we actually allow you to link your own courier as well. Right. So it allows you to link, um, you know, the, the, the big three uh, courier company for now, like UPS, DHL and FedEx. So you can basically just connect your account on EasyShip. And we would actually uh, show you the rates based on <clears throat> whatever it's pulled from, whatever rates your couriers are giving you. So we would show you their rate and then you can actually get to compare their rates with our rates. So I think this is, this is actually uh, quite useful for those uh, merchants in India. So we do not have any courier options in India at this moment, um, but we are looking to expand it. But then we do have Indian um, merchants using us, you know, just by linking their FedEx and DHL account to get started shipping. Right, so this, this is how you, you can link your Shopmatic account with EasyShip for Singapore merchants. So we are looking to add this feature in for the Indian merchants as well. So we're in discussion with Shopmatic. Um, so all you, all you need to do is just click on Shopmatic and then they'll prompt you to create an account. And then you have to put your API key on EasyShip dashboard and you are ready to go. Okay, so what it provides is that, you know, you would have a one-stop dashboard which provides you like um, information on your, your merchants, uh, I mean on your buyer. And at the same time, it shows you where, where your shipments are. So in, in an event where your buyer actually asks, hey, where, where is my shipment? You are able to actually head to the dashboard to track your shipments. And it is provided with a real-time tracking update. So as long as the courier updates their tracking status, we would update accordingly uh, as well. So it would be pretty much in line with whatever which is being displayed by the courier itself. So this is our fulfillment solution. Um, so what, what happens is that you can actually send your goods um, to our warehousing partner. So in this case, for Singapore itself, we have Stashworks. Um, you can upload your order to EasyShip. Or, or via API, right? So um, if, if it is via API, your buyers would be the one selecting the couriers. But if you're uploading it manually, you are the one selecting what sort of courier you want to provide to your clients. So the warehouse will be able to pack your orders. And at the same time, once it's being packed, it will, be, uh, we will automatically notify your clients. And you know your clients will be able to track directly based on the email we sent, or you can send an email as well on your end. So your clients will be able to track their orders. Um, so this, this in terms is a very seamless process, whereas you, know, you do not have to actually be involved in a lot of steps if you were to outsource your operations to the fulfillment house, whether is it in Singapore, Hong Kong, US, UK, or even Australia itself. Right. So for case study, what I would like to talk about, it's actually one of Shopmatic's client, um, freshening. So what, how, how did EasyShip and Shopmatic actually provide, you know, freshening a good opportunity to actually expand internationally? Um, so EasyShip actually provide rates for freshening. So, you know, with live rates at checkout, what, what happens is that during this period of COVID, 
um, freshening actually sells a lot of um, you know wet wipes and sanitizers. So during this period, with live checkouts, uh, freshening has actually managed to gain exposure to international buyers from the UK, US. Right. So I, I think the most surprising country would be actually South Africa. Um, so, so I mean, without live rates, then you're actually just shutting your door to having more exposure in terms of having clients or buyers, uh, potential buyers who pop by your store, who happen to chance upon your store in regardless, uh, you know, in an event, if you do not do any ads, right, they happen to ch chance upon your store and they're able to do so. Um, so this actually gives freshening a chance to, to provide different various career options to the buyers. And, and uh, I would say that they're doing actually pretty well during this period in terms of international shipping. Okay, so I understand, um, you know, like you guys have a lot of questions in the live chat. Uh, so, um, you know, feel free to type out your questions and we will be able to answer them. Right, so there, there are actually no charges to opening an account with EasyShip. Um, so, for EasyShip itself, it is a free to use platform. So without, without a subscription, what, what happens is that, you know, we, we do allow you to have most of the features which was mentioned earlier on. Um, you're able to link one courier account and you're able to ship to a certain uh, shipping volume itself. So in terms for Singapore itself, it is a minimum of 500 shipments. So anything more than 500 shipments, you'll be applicable to a subscription fee. Um, so how do we start to ship internationally? So once you sign up an EasyShip account, um, if you're using a Singapore Shopmatic account, you can just connect it right away. So once, once it's been connected, you're able to start shipping internationally. Um, yes, EasyShip, you can use EasyShip for domestic market as well. Um, but at this moment, you can only use it for Singapore. We are looking to actually expand it to India to provide domestic solutions as well. You are able to use EasyShip to ship from the country of origin, for example, Singapore, India, UK, US, Australia, Hong Kong, and Netherlands. Um, you know, from these few locations at the moment, we are able to ship them internationally. I'm sorry, I, I do not get what what you're referring to, what are the changes? Um, so I, I believe it's charges, if I'm not mistaken. So there is no added cost on top of it. We actually get a card from uh, a rebate from the courier. So for domestic charges, uh, if we're referring to Singapore for Q Express below 5 kg, it's at $3.99 inclusive of GST. Okay, so if, if you have an export account, may I know, you know, which, which country are you shipping from? I expect that would be India. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so I mean, if, if you have an export account from India, you can actually link it with, with your account on EasyShip. Um, once the integration with Shopmatic is done, you would be able to have the full-fledged ability to actually display live rates. So at, at, this, at this point of time, what, what would EasyShip do for you if you were to connect your FedEx account? I would say, uh, one, you can actually manage all your shipment on the dashboard. We do not require you to fill in as many information as compared to FedEx directly itself. Okay, um, and then I noticed someone said, can the pickup address be changed easily? Yes, so you can actually have multiple pickup address. So you can store all your pickup address on on the dashboard itself. And then, you know, um, you can just select where you want it to be picked up. So a lot of our clients on fulfillment, they do have pickup address at the fulfillment house, but they do not want to let their clients know that it is, you know, picked up from the fulfillment house. So what happens is that we do have another feature where we allow you to mask the sending the pickup address. So you can display a default address. So uh, for pickup fee, uh, Yes, so pickup is actually free unless dated. Um, so most of the couriers in Singapore, they are providing free pickups. Uh, the only courier which is charging for pickup as, at the moment is um, Ninja Van itself. So how, how do you contact us? Um, if, if you have any questions you want to ask via email or some, something more personal, you can actually email us at hello-sg. Let me send it out. 
Yep. So you can actually email us, um, you know, if you have more personal related questions and it's pretty much confidential. Um, so you can just email us. Right, so for cash on delivery, uh, it is not available at the moment. We are actually exploring our options to enable cash on delivery uh, with, with our partners as well. So, so that, that would actually be a pretty much interesting concept. But at this moment, we do not have it. And I think due to COVID, a lot of um, couriers, they are not providing it as well. You know, they, they want to keep it contactless. They want to try to protect their staff as much as possible. Uh, hi, Diana. Are you able to see the email? Yep, so, so we do understand that cash on delivery is pretty common. Um, we know that there is a demand for that as well. So we're actually exploring the options to provide cash on delivery, if possible, uh, international cash on delivery as well. But at this point of time, um, you know, due to the COVID, so, so there is actually huge delays in, in such projects as well. So, so when, when you're referring to guide on setting up the international shipping, are, are you referring to guiding on how to link it directly with your Shopmatic store? So I mean, if you would like to do it, um, you know, just feel free to drop that email above. If you guys missed it, you can just drop Shopmatic at easyship.com. We would be able to actually, you know, um, assist you in terms of, of whatever difficulties you're facing in, with the integration with EasyShip. And to answer Diana, yes, uh, the team at Shopmatic can also help you. Uh, feel free to reach out to us, Diana. Are there any further questions that we have for Zach and his team? Well, even as we wait for some questions to come, I'm sure there are probably a few more that um, will come your way, Zach. I want to just take this opportunity to thank you for the very informative uh, session with us and um, really gives us a good lay of the ground with respect to what's happening uh, with shipping, you know, especially for international shipping, etc. given the COVID situation currently, what we can expect, uh, etc. I think there's a question here, even as I'm thanking you. Why don't you take a question first? <laughs> yep, sure. Um, yep, so Stash Work does warehousing. Um, so they actually just launched a COVID plan. So I mean, if you're in Singapore or you're looking to enter Singapore, um, feel free to drop us an email, shopmatic at easyship.com. So it is actually pretty competitive in terms of their minimum spend. So they actually reduce their minimum spend per month at, to $50. So with, at just from fifth, starting from $50, you can actually have like a third party warehouse uh, solution available as well. It's quite a wealth of information that you're able to share with our participants today. Thank you so much for that. I think um, some more for coming your way. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, uh, if, if your products uh, have lower margin, what, what happens is that, which is why internet uh, having a live rates would actually protect you. Right. So, so in terms of the advantage of having live rates is that first, you'll be able to know where, if there is any remote area surcharge or anything like that, right? So, I mean, ultimately as a merchant, you would like to protect yourself and you would like to ensure that you do not make a loss in terms of shipping. Um, so, so it is, um, so with life rates and with easy ship, what we, what we do on our end is that we actually get, try to have as many couriers as possible on our platform. So in terms, you are able to compare what sort of solutions are available out there in the market and how you can actually make use of that to strategize you know, your product pricing in terms of you know, adding, it, adding the shipping cost onto your item itself or having like a minimum purchase to get additional discount for shipping and stuff like that. Um, connected to that particular query, I want to ask something and clarify for the benefit of the participants. So I know that we have lots and lots of uh, shipping partners available on EasyShip. Um, can our merchants choose which ones they want to link up and work with and deselect the ones that they do not particularly want to work with, for example? Is that possible? 
Yep, so, so it is actually possible. So um, we do have a lot of features in our dashboard. So you are actually able to select, you know, which career you prefer the most or which career you dislike. So for, for instance, if you dislike career X, Y, Z, you are able to disable them from showing up on the live chats, right? The live checkout. So, so this is actually, you know, you are able to manage everything on your end. What happens is that we actually give you full visibility and control over what you want your buyers to see. So if you think X, Y, Z is not so a good career, you are able to actually disable them. That's great. That's great. Can you just um, share again with our participants, what are the three options their buyers will see when they are doing this dynamic or in this dynamic checkout experience? What are they called again? Yep. So they are able to see three options, um, cheapest, fastest, and most value for money. But I would say like what differentiate us from a lot of, um, you know, checkout plugins, or, or similar uh, company in the space is that what happens is that we actually calculate the potential taxes and duty your, your buyers would have to pay. So this actually reduce a lot of rejected shipments, you know, due to, due to like unpaid taxes and duty, right? So mm -hmm. the, the hassle for unpaid taxes and duty would be the couriers would actually ask you, whether do you want to pay for the return shipment or do you want to pay for disposal? Right. And at the same time, the buyer would actually try to get you know, for, uh, try to claw back their money from their mm. credit card provider as well. So mm. this this is, would be a pretty big loss in terms of selling to buyers, you know, who are not willing to pay taxes and duty. Right. I think we had a question from BB. Yes, BB, your question again. Uh, if we haven't answered that again, could you just share it with us? Sorry? Uh, there was one of our participants that raised a question. I can see that she had raised a question in the chat. I was asking her to repeat that if we haven't yet answered it. Um, so I, I, okay, so so uh, I, I believe that maybe I'll, I'll just answer the last two to three questions. Um, so okay. first, does easy ship support drop ship? Uh, so I mean, if you're referring to drop shipping model from China, we do not support that. Um, there is a few reasons being it's because first, um, a lot of dropship, uh, a lot of them who are on drop shipping, what happens is that the prices for drop shipping, it's already sort of imbued into the item itself, mm -hmm. right? So if you're using like the party apps with drop shipping, um, it is imbued in, in those itself. And then generally speaking, they do have their own career providers option. Mm -hmm. Um, the next question I would like to answer is, you know, like, um, do we do we actually do troubleshooting for specific career? So this is actually the biggest advantage on using EasyShip. So assuming if you were to use EasyShip and then you ship with like three of our providers and you're unfortunately enough to be facing issues with all three different providers, what happens is that all you have to do is just reach out to our customer support team. Um, they would be able to assist you with all three careers itself. So instead of reaching out to all three different careers, what happens is that all you need to do is just reach out to one customer support team and we would be the one managing it on our end for you. Right? So uh, our customer support team is actually based in UK, Singapore and Canada and we work from Monday to Saturday. So you're pretty much covered six days a week. So we are at 7.10 right now. Um, I would just encourage participants to raise your questions if you have any further for Zach and his team or the Shopmatic team and we can um, quickly address them. And once again, going back to saying my thank yous to you, Zach, and your team. Um, fabulous uh, presentation. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Uh, couldn't have been a better timing to know all the information you shared on this. And we really look forward to hosting you again on the Shopmatic uh, webinars very soon. Yeah, so I would like to thank everyone, you know, for, for taking your time, um, especially during dinner time for those in Singapore, um, you know, to, to attend this. Uh, it, it, it was very great sharing with you guys. So, I mean, if you guys have any questions you want to, to reach out to me privately, um, feel free to just email us either at hello-sg at easyship.com or shopmatic at easyship.com. So we would be able to uh, respond to your inquiry and then, you know, we, we really do hope to see more people ship internationally and we hope to, re, you know, to solve your hassle of shipping internationally as well.
Fantastic. I would just like to uh, reassure all of our participants that uh, this is a recorded session and we will be sharing the recording of this particular session uh, on the Shopmatic YouTube channel in a few days once we have it um, all sort of like tidied up. Uh, so do uh, look out for this particular recording. You can also see past webinar recordings of uh, Shopmatic at the uh, YouTube channel of Shopmatic. So please do visit that to see any of the webinars that you may have missed earlier. And uh, we do have several uh, topics coming for you um, every month. Uh, so watch out for the invitation emails in your inboxes um, and do join them. Um, we have a great lineup of speakers for next month as well. Um, we will be talking um, about um, a payment solution based out of India. We look uh, to have a host uh, speaker who will be talking about um, uh, digital marketing on social media. So quite a bit of exciting webinars coming up, coming your way. Um, so yeah, so with that uh, note, I'd like to close the session if there are no further questions for Zach and his team or for the Shopmatic team.